preparing for tech failures. This is really important for remote facilitation to make sure everything goes smoothly. You just need to expect everything to go wrong and have a fallback option and a plan B for everything going wrong. So you literally need to go through all of the tools that you're using uh, from the digital whiteboard uh, to the conferencing call, internet connections, and just expect all of these to fail and map out the scenarios for when they do fail. It's not a question of if, in our experience, everything that can go wrong will go wrong. And so you really need to prepare for all of this. Otherwise, you're gonna stress out on the spot. Uh, it might take time uh, to set up an alternative. You have to do it in the middle of a workshop and it'll just kill the momentum of the workshop and annoy your participants. So you really need to pay attention to this. And when you do, you'll feel a lot more confident in your facilitation. And when something does go wrong, you can handle it without stressing out. It's even helpful to simulate these situations so that you can uh, get in the rhythm of quickly fixing them. Now, you can do this as one person, but it will really raise the quality of your remote workshops to have a dedicated facilitator who will guide everyone through the exercises and a dedicated technical facilitator who can walk people through all of the difficulties they might have. So they could message someone if they drop out of a call, they can give them a call to see what happened if they can't reach them via chat anymore. They can help people who are lost with an exercise. You can detect this if you see people on the board who aren't typing anything. They can also be on the lookout for anyone having excessive background noise that's distracting for others and proactively mute them. Uh, so that they don't disturb the rest of the workshop. And they can also troubleshoot problems on the spot when they arise. So common things would be people having slow machines. And so the technical facilitator can run through a list with them to tell them to switch off all their apps that they don't need for the workshop. And that will improve performance as well as reduce distractions because oftentimes people will have other apps running like email and chat apps uh, for their internal work that they don't need to have during the workshop. And so it really helps to have someone take care of all of that for you, and it will raise the quality of the workshop immensely. And there you have it. Now you know what to do when your tech breaks in your remote workshop. I hope this video was helpful. If you want to learn more about workshopping and facilitation, join our free facilitation community where hundreds of facilitators share their tricks, insights, and resources. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.